Welcome to Alicante, welcome to The Daily Show. Let's go straight to the virtual eye because there's quite a lot happening out in the water at the moment. We are into the final 1,000 miles and Mafre at the moment are leading the fleet with Dongfeng Race Team, Vestas 11th Hour Racing and Team Brunel making up the front four. Axinabel, the Dutch team, well, they've had a pretty difficult last 10 hours slipping back and letting Sun Hong Kai scallywag and turn the tide on plastics to roll over them to the north. And all this means that Simeon Team Point and his crew are going to struggle to stay in the breeze. Just take a look at the wind and how it's spread out on the course at the moment. There's a lot of pressure for those front four boats, but the boats at the back risk dying in the light winds and struggling all the way to Cape Town. Well, to find out what life is like at the front of the fleet and what the pressure is like leading this fleet, we spoke to Juan Villa, the navigator on Mafre, and I asked him whether he was nervous about holding on to his position. It's a kind of a difficult position to defend and uh, just trying to do what, what we feel is best for us. But it looks like the transition to a high pressure that we've got ahead looks good, but uh, we're always nervous that it can be a little bit lighter than predicted and then uh, still the race is far from over. Is there a particular boat lining up at the moment that you're nervous about? Well, it looks like they've all been doing pretty well. I mean, Vestas had their moments and uh, Dong Fen had their moments. Uh, and, and Tim Brunel is, uh, is uh, definitely selling very well. So uh, all the three can, uh, can be potential threats to, to our lead. So, so uh, let's see how things pan up. We're trying to do what, um, what the feel is best for us and, uh, and uh, trying to find out the best way to protect our, our lead. Do you feel confident about holding the French team back? Uh, if it all pans as predicted, probably yes. But obviously, uh, uh, as you know, weather, weather is uh, a little bit of a uh, not an exact science. So, um, so uh, we'll see how it goes. So it's always, it's always uh, in racing. There's always the opportunity to come back. But, uh, but right now, if everything pans out as as forecast, we should we should be okay. But. Uh, you never can tell for 100% sure. The morale on board Mafre at the moment, it's high while you're in the lead? Yeah, it's very high here. We're, um, we're um, just working to, um, to hold the lead as much as we can just to, um, to get uh, the best post, boat speed, uh, um, the best uh, speed of our conditions. And, um, and uh, hopefully the, everyone is uh, very, very keen on, uh, on uh, doing their, their maximum and, uh, and uh, looking forward to... Uh, to get as fast as possible to Cape Town. Uh, yeah, the morale on board is, is really high. Well, how fast is it that you're going to be getting to Cape Town? What's your guess on the ETA at the moment? Uh, it looks like uh, if we don't get to, um, too light on this uh, high pressure ridge, it could be like uh, two days. So that's our best guess is uh, probably Friday afternoon being in Cape Town. But uh, if it goes lighter than predicted, then we might be delayed a little bit. All right, well, such good luck to you. We'll see you in Cape Town and keep up the good work. Thank you. Juan Villa says Friday, but there's still 850 miles of sailing before they get to Cape Town and a warm bed. Let's have a look at how they get there, in fact. Okay, so looking at the routine, remember this is just theoretical, but they, this is the, using the same tool that they use on board. You can see Dongfeng and Mafre over here, and then the little fleet of stragglers stuck there in the back. Look at how that diverges and most notably how that is spreading out. You can see that the gap between the front and the back of the boat is gonna be stretching all the way across these last 100 miles that remain. Always more pressure here for the leaders and sadly always less for the ones behind. Now, in sailing, we, it's a cliche, but we say that this is a rich get richer game and sadly it's just how that's gonna work. You can see that there's a jibe coming up in a few hours for the leaders here. So that's the four boats tucked in at the front. Um, and during this time, actually, the, the stragglers are in a more advantaged wind because they've got wind here. They're gonna be on port jibe and sailing quite fast to their jibe a few hours later. But if we step forward in time, we've got the leaders up here, the stragglers up here. Look at the color difference and thus the strength of the, of the wind. Here we've got 15, uh, 15 knots or maybe 20 knots waiting for them over here. Here we've got maybe 10. So that could be sort of 7 to 12 knots over here with Axel Nobel, Sohun Kai, Scallywag and uh, Turn the Tide on Plastic. Well... It's going to be a real struggle for those boats at the back, and you can see less wind all the way. However, let's have a look at how navigator on board Sunken Kai Scallywag, Steve Hales, looks at the coming few days. 
No, they'll have plenty of breeze, they'll just be lifted. The guys did a really good job of hanging on to a big sail last night in lots of wind. Um, we pushed really hard. Made a seven mile gain on, on turn the tide, which was very positive, but that's also kept us ahead of the front um, in a good way. And Axa Noval, who were south of us, looked like they might have just slipped off the back a little bit, which means they're in a, a worse wind direction. Um, and we just made an 18 mile gain on them. Continuation from uh, a nice gain against the Exo Nobel. Um, they kind of got a bit caught between the two groups, um, the sort of north and south group. Uh, tried to put their bow up and get ahead of the front, which they have succeeded in doing, but um, it's been a big loss for them. We're ahead of Axo. Yes! They're 20 miles away now, but we're uh, now seven miles in front of them, which is nice. So the standings show us having made a place, which is always nice. Steve Hales, navigator on Sun Hunkai Scallywag, describing just the challenge that they've got lying ahead. But let's go to the most important news today. If you've been watching over the last week, you'll know that we've had a bit of a competition running here for this jacket that Conrad Coleman is modelling now. Musto have very kindly <coughs> donated it to the winner of our competition for the best photo of you guys playing the virtual skipper a volvo ocean race game and well just check out some of these incredibly strong entries that we've had to wade through here we've been playing the game in volvo ocean race headquarters as well but your entries i've got to say really made us quite jealous about some of the setups that we're seeing here it's very impressive you know this one is, is beautiful but the amount of energy that's going into these things you know frankly i'm concerned that we're going to be responsible for a lot of sleepless nights and maybe a few divorces along the course of the race and it, not, not only we've we been seeing people uh playing the game but playing the game in style i mean check out some of the equipment that people are using here multiple screens and everything else like that we've been really struggling to pick out some of the ones that we thought were the top of the crop because they were all really fantastic. So many of you playing the game, young, old, from all different walks of life, really enjoying the the things that you guys have been prepared to do to win a jacket, frankly. Uh, frankly, some of you have been in boats, some of you have been in buckets and pretending that you're, you're in boats. Thank you so much for responding to the call saying that I wanted wet people playing the game. The <laughs> ways that you got wet were pretty terrifying, frankly. But just look, look at this, you know, round the corner, uh, round the clock sailing, you know. Well, th I think this was the, the thing is there was quite a few ones where Baby. you think, start them when they're young, <laughs> definitely. We've got Love no it. problem with that. Not sure about forcing them out into the cold, into the snow to, yep. to, to play the game as well. And this one okay. here, I mean, this one had a stop. I have no idea whether this plane is in the sky. Well, Hopefully that from motorcycle From plane to is... motorcycle, incredible. And, I, and really, you know, <laughs> let's be committed to the game, but let's stay safe out there, shall we? <laughs> I mean, well, one thing's for sure is you guys found some incredible places to play this game yeah. and an amazing ways to find some empathy with the crews as they're going across the equator Indeed. and getting their heads shaved and things like that. So well done for you. Well done for, you know, for joining us here every day, following us with the show. But let's go now to our top five these were some of the ones that really stood out for us incredible <laughs> installation here so much energy so much <laughs> so many screens and clearly more analysis going on in that photo than actually happens here in the office and this one for me i mean this was one of my favorites there's just something a, a nice style about this one Very different the, the, absolutely you know if you're going to play the game play it in style and yeah. the recreation of some of the things that we've seen coming off the boat here from the footage has been absolutely fantastic and this one here really was close to winning the top spot. This is the kind of enthusiasm that we love to see. Yep. And finally, your winner, this is Donald Rudnickus and family from Mystic, Connecticut. Uh, now, admittedly, I am a bit of a sucker for this one because he was recreating uh, my version of the, uh, of the equator. But just the fact that you've got all of the kids, the, the drama and the embarrassment of what his dad doing here, along with the young young daughter with binoculars, really beautiful. So well done, Don. Um, please write into us and give us your, your jacket uh, size and we'll be sending you a clean jacket your way. Well, fantastic and thank you so much for all your responses and all your entries. We've certainly enjoyed having a look at every single one that's come in. Now, of course, leg two is starting to wrap up. We're inside the final 1,000 miles. Tomorrow, we've got another quick fix in the morning and then another daily show at 1300 UTC. And we're going to leave you today with this quick wrap up of some of the amazing racing we've seen over the last week.
the Volvo Ocean Race fleet is just days away from the finish of League Two. 7,000 nautical miles from Lisbon to Cape Town, South Africa. The race continues to challenge even the most experienced, whilst for those attempting it for the first time, it's highlighted the high degree of competitiveness in the one design fleet. It's a new place for the team to be in, right? We're getting, getting our head kicked in to get out the skid and not really being able to fix it or not exactly knowing what's wrong. It's quite hard. It's bloody hard this race. And the opposition are bloody good. It's pretty hard to keep your emotions in check, but um, yeah, that sport is that if it wasn't emotional, um, you know, we probably wouldn't do it. After a fast and furious opening 10 days at sea and an unusually rapid passage through the notorious, generally windless doldrums, the fleet are halfway home. For seven consecutive days, Team Brunel and Vessus 11th hour racing were locked in a private race of their own for third until the Dutch team finally broke the deadlock against the Leg 1 winners, setting their sights on the leaders. We've got to keep pushing, pushing. We've got Matt Frey in our sights and that's our kind of next target. So we've, we've honed in on them like a heat-seeking missile and we're going to take them down next. The fleet then had to roll the dice, how to navigate the St Helena High, a near stationary high pressure system in the South Atlantic which blocks the direct route to Cape Town. The lead pack of Dongfong race team, Matt Frey, Tim Brunel and Vestas 11th Hour Racing aims their bows south and west, closest to the Brazilian coast, working around the centre of the high in a bid to be the first of the fresh westerlies in a rapid ride towards the finish. a little bit of a high pressure ridge and um, it's forcing us a little bit further to the west toward Brazil to, to get around it and um, a little bit of a difference in opinion with Brunel as to what's the best way to do it so we'll see, we'll see what happens in a few days. Team Exnobel gambled and elected to cut the corner to head east taking the inside track around the Santa Helena High in an effort to overhaul the leading quartet to their southwest. They are um, to the east of us and uh, so you can either continue south as we're doing and then um, and then blast across east with the, with the front a little bit later, probably in a day or two, but they're going to cut the corner to try and sail less distance and try to get to catch down earlier, but with the risk of missing the, missing the good part of the front. After struggling earlier in the league, Hong Kong's Sung Hun Kai Scallywag fought their way back into the mix, drawing level with Di Kafari's Turn the Tide on Plastic. See, we're two and a half thousand miles to go, 10 days more sailing, but 11 days into the leg, we're about 200 metres in the lead and they're half a mile away. I'm pissed. They're still there. I want to get rid of them. Bloody scallies. A week from the finish, the fleet faced one of the most critical decisions of the leg, a test of nerves for all the navigators, when to turn left towards Cape Town. Well, we were one of the first ones to jibe actually away from Cape Town. Further to the west is uh, more pressure, so we're trying to get to that area and then do the final jibe and come on the train from that way. After leading for most of the leg, the mood on board Dongfong race team plummeted after delaying their decision to jibe and allowing Mafre to move first and take over as leaders. As a result, the Chinese flag team found themselves east closer to the light winds of the high pressure system and paid the price, battling instead for third. Well, the last 24 hours after Santa Elena High, uh, we took uh, the south uh, as far south as possible and as quick as possible. And, and right now it's paying, it's paying quite well to be here south of the fleet and hopefully we can keep going like this with a little bit more wind than the others and moving forward. But with nearly a week of sailing still to go, there's plenty of racing left on leg two and plenty of time for things to change. With Breeze on, Mafre lead the charge as the fleet turn their vowels towards Cape Town, expected to arrive over the weekend.